Hemina with their brand new album, Venus. Uh, a couple years ago, we tackled on Nebula from this Sydney, Australia-based progressive metal group, and it certainly gave us a little bit of a snapshot of what they are all about. This is a group that's able to use some real powerful ripping as well as real emotional lyricism and just emotional songwriting in order to captivate. And with Venus, they have a very interesting scenario at hand. This is a band that's very prominent on band camp and really should be taken to the next level uh, if Venus is able to deliver. So let's take a look at what we have here. This is a 12-track affair, and it's a lengthy one. This is one where you almost wonder how the magic of Digipacks work or whether or not this is a two-disc set in its physical form, considering it clocks in at an impressive 82 minutes in length. And, of course, the traditional end point is 79.59. Wow the things that we've learned from Load from Metallica. So, within this album, you're going to hear a lot of influence from some of the prog heavyweights, and it's going to be both old and new. I've heard some elements of Dream Theater in this band. I've heard some elements of Haken, of Riverside, of even Beardfish, names that I love, and names that uh, many people have grown to really enjoy, even some Pain of Salvation within their passages as well. So. One thing that this band has really going for it is the heavy element of some synth or some keyboard. You hear that with Fantasy right as it kicks off and then it launches into its uh, progressive metal uh, bliss. But really for me, the album truly starts to get really open and interesting whenever we reach uh, the third track of this album, which is High Kite Ride. This is nine minutes and it really embodies and encapsulates everything about what the not only this band is about but what this sort of new era of prog has been about about crafting a really strong and sincere backbone and also allowing the songwriting itself to take its course and really tell an impressive story within a patterned amount of time with this song i hear a little bit of shadow gallery at their most you know sort of sincere and fierce moments basically because uh, on some of their tracks uh, especially off of Room B or Tyranny for example they do get a heavier edge and it's one that helps to guide the song uh, to the moments that do not have that same element of heaviness and High Kite Ride seems to follow that same formula uh, really doing so in Hamina's trademark style, which is becoming trademark now that they're three albums and they are evolving a little bit each time and it seems like they're evolving in a bit of a heavier direction each time and I do kind of like that. I think that it gives them a little bit of identity. So we encounter our second epic off of this uh, album, the self-titled Venus, which is sort of the opposite. It's one that focuses a lot more on softness, a little bit more than mid-range as well. It's one where the melody is very impressive and guides you through a story that does dive into that emotional idea that was brought up at the onset. This is a track that has a lot of power and passion behind it. It does remind me of some of what uh, Nebula was able to offer considering that was a disc that really seemed to have a deep emotional focus uh, that was not exactly second place to the heaviness that was featured on it. Instead, it functioned very much like a partnership, uh, almost like a marriage. And this is one where Venus showcases that a little bit more on the softer edge, a little bit on that uh, scale, and allows the songwriting to really take its course and really provide the narrative that this track is able to boast. Now, there are some shorter tracks on this disc that are sort of woven in between some of these songs, providing it with a little bit of a long track, so, uh, short track balance. For example, the first track, Fantasy and High Kite Rise, is flanked by Expect the Unexpected in the uh, in the middle of it. And then between High Kite Ride and Venus, we have Moonlight Bride, and both of these are also very well done. Considering with these quicker songs, these ones that don't have that length sort of the you know, allow the atmosphere or allow the composition to expand, they're able to get these ideas uh, really put together and thrust out there with a very focused, focused drive. And all in all, while this doesn't feel 100% like it's conceptual, it does have a lot of links that provide some nice moments that tie everything together. Whenever you get toward the center portion of this album, Past Venus, whenever you get to the Collective Unconscious, Secret Safe, Star Breeze, these are songs that really keep the action flowing. If there's one thing that makes this disc extremely addicting, 
is that it does not lose its focus, and that is extremely critical, because there are some bands that I feel whenever they go very lengthy with their compositions can sometimes go a little bit too far, have a lot of ideas that they you know, want to put in and they don't really want to do any sort of cutting or any sort of real, you know, focus on trying to provide the best track possible. And I feel that Hamina finally found that balance where they can tackle a track that is three minutes all the way up to the longest track on this album, which is Down Will Come Baby, track number 11, which is 12 minutes and one second. They found that balance where it doesn't matter what length they tackle, they are giving you Quality. And another great example of a band that did that this year is An Abstract Illusion. Though they did it in a much different way, that was a band that reminds me a bit more of Niebla Vizcaris with a hint of Agaloc, whereas Amina, in doing this, reminds me of Haken, and one that is quickly gaining a lot of real, I guess, real-world experience. They're gaining a lot of professionalism. They're gaining that experience that they need in order to tackle all things. But before you even get to Down Will Come, baby, you have the impressive track I, which is song nine on this disc, a nearly 11-minute epic. There are three songs that are more than 10 minutes, four that are more than nine, and each of these really feel like highlights, almost as though while they are separate musical ideas, they could almost be four parts of the same whole, only based off of the idea that the package that you gain, the overall impressive use of the guitar work, the, the backbone, the percussion, really providing the moments that are necessary, the, uh, the added uh, nature of the synths, you know, the way in which this is composed, there's a lot of care that's being placed in. It was really sort of combed over with a very, very uh, fine tooth comb, not to sound redundant, but that's uh, probably the best way to go about it describing it. There is a lot of quality that is featured on uh, I, and it's one that swirls, it one, it's one that really delivers, and also has a lot of captivation uh, that is attached to it, giving it this sort of almost instant appeal. Uh, I still think that I Kite Ride is probably the highlight of this album, but I is probably a close second. It has just a great overall flow to it, and really the album itself has a terrific charm and flow to it uh, as a secondary point. But whenever you get the dream state of mind, Down Will Come Baby, and the final track, You, you're getting right there 25 minutes worth of this disc, worth of this 82 minute long experience. And this is a finale where they really pull out all the stops. They're looking to really combine and showcase everything that they're capable of, as well as the new tricks that they've learned between the release of Nebula and the release of uh, Venus, really helping to boost up a little bit of that heaviness while never, ever selling short the charm of their very emotionally powerful and very driven vocals and driven lyricism uh, to deliver a significant prog experience. This is a name that really with Venus, uh, it, it was an album that needed to deliver to give these guys a leg to stand on if they are to be sort of mentioned in some of the same company as the bands that have been mentioned during this review, you know, doing so in a comparative way. But Venus is an album that if tackled by the right crowd, and really by the right crowd, I mean just explored by anybody who is a fan of progressive music, anybody who likes progressive metal, and really those that are progressive rock fans as well, they are going to find something on this disc that speaks to them, and really, it's not just going to be a spoken word, it's going to be a scream. It's going to give them everything that they've really asked for and more. Venus is a very tight affair, it has a lot of charm, and probably its best point, perhaps its crowning achievement, is that that runtime looks harrowing. But once you get into the experience, it is not. It shortens the runtime considerably, considering everything here just feels so well designed, well thought out, and finally well performed. Uh, this is an 87 out of 100. This is a great disc, one that I highly recommend to fans of progressive music, one that I recommend really to fans of even heavy metal music that want to maybe take their first foray into that style of maybe a checked out Dream Theater and it wasn't quite for you, this might be a band to scope out if you're 
more of a fan of bands that are on the underground. You don't want to go right for the big heavy names and, you know, sort of be subject to the preconceived notions that you've got from other listeners and kind of want something that's just for you. This might be that band. This might be the group that you can really get behind. I, I'm certainly behind these guys. I think that they have a great uh, real musical product here. They have a great identity. It's something that should take them further in their career. They're definitely going to need a little support. Um, their Bandcamp link is in the description box below. I implore you to check it out. Please do. I also want to know, once you do, what are your thoughts on Venus by Hamina? Let me know in the comments below. My name is Cover Killer Nation, and we still have one more prog album to tackle this weekend. We're going to do so tomorrow. That is uh, the Neil Morse Band, and we might have another heavyweight on our hands with that. So I hope that you'll subscribe and stay tuned for that. I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you guys are wondering what I thought about the last Tamina album that I referenced in this video, check out the link to your left. If you want to see other album reviews from 2016, scope out the playlist to your right. You can also subscribe and also scope out my Patreon. I'm Cover Killer Nation. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Take care.